Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here to start a new campaign in TNO, The Last of Europe, as we're playing everyone's favorite non-Russian unifier, or non-Finnish unifier, or just not a unifier at all, Onega, led by some Vladimir Karpichnikov. If you like to read about him, please go ahead and pause the game, or pause the video, I guess. But uh, we'll talk about our spirits soon, but then Red Menace. Before the Great Patriotic War, there existed a union of workers and Soviets that re reigned from the Baron to the Baltic, once a forerunner to fulfilling the dreams of the proletariat everywhere. The Germans have shattered this union, and now warlords claim the pieces of Russia. As it stands, the largest remnant of the Union Authority in West Russia borders us. And to put them mildly, they are not the friendliest neighbors by a long shot. Neither the people of Olenega nor the Finns desire their breaking, breakthrough past our humble little state. As such, we need to take measures to arm ourselves against continued raids and incursions coming from the front. The sandbags shall pile high, and the men behind them will be prepared to open fire. Never shall they take what rightfully belongs to people. For her, and for every kilogram stolen, they shall pay for its weight in blood. Onega will endure and outlive the specter of the lost union. Also, we are considered a warlord state, which is fine. Uh, warlord development, of course, raiding and looting, uh, which we're probably going to go and scavenge for loot. Uh, what makes a man? Vladimir Karpichnikov stood in this frigid capital of Onega, overlooking one of the many barracks within the town reserved for the tropes of his anti communist vanguard, Volunteer of Guard. Uh, the guard has been his work, the creation, organization, and recruitment of soldiers into it. It certainly had been an, an easy task. Truthfully, ever since his capture and imprisonment by the Finns, Karpichnikov had missed or organizing commanding troops. I'll look at all this stuff here. But even then, with the gift that they had been bestowed upon him, he was reminded of the true nature of his pose. He was well aware of his little being little more than a pawn of the interests of Helsinki, and was just as aware that his actions were negative and beyond had been more than mildly authoritarian. It was a military dictator, simply put, and one propped up by the Finnish government at that. It was a position that caused him great ambivalence on one hand. He could protect those within his five to serve the interests of Karelian Russians on the other. He only did so as a means to finish ends, and any dissension, especially from communist elements, was intolerated. A certain look on Karpichnikov's face as he looked down on his volunteer guard, training via trade, few of the emotions that he felt, ultimately. The ex Soviet general thought to himself, his position as leader of the guard wasn't one that sat right with him in his gut. Oh no. We don't have any nuclear stockpile. A trumped up, trumped up a dictator. Based out of the small timber town of Onega was hardly a fitting or prestigious legacy for a Soviet commander, but the Karpichnikov had little love lost for the Soviets under Bukharin, but even more so under the military rule of Alexander Yevgorov, who had treated the Russian people with all manners of cruelty during the German invasion, snapped out of his thoughts by a subordinate's call, he banished his ambivalence. To the background of his mind began his weekly inspection. All right, let's begin. And our energy benefactors, increase the liquid reserves, guarantee stability. I like stability in, uh, War support. Onega might very well be the last bastion of protection against the horrors of West Russia, and the West Russian Revolutionary Front in particular. We are a candle amid the dark, our faint light illuminating the way for those who walk with us. A plane of stability in the middle of a raging sea, if we are to defend ourselves, the people must first feel safe away from the dangers that the warlords of Russia present. We must legitimize their claims to our lands, the Finnish, the Germans, and Russians know we will, that we were the last best hope for democracy in West Russia. No more shall the days of banditry disturb and harass the common man of Onega. He shall feel safe, for all that look to the north shall not only see terror and horror, but a hand clasping a torch of liberty. The other shall wield a sword, and all that desires to extinguish a torch shall bleed and die. Goalkeeper. Yet there are Sokolov, sat in his chair, a pipe clenched between his teeth, rough fingers slipping through a battered journal. The pages tickled his callous pads as the leaf slid under his hands, a thoughtful expression settling on his face. The dates above each entry were written in a smudge black ink reading from 1917 to 1922. A lifetime ago, Peter stopped on a random page, his old eyes flicking back and forth as he read, a smile crept over his creased face. The entry in question described Pieter's adventure deep into, deep into a red territory with his one-time companion, the spy, Paul Dukes. Pieter and the Brit had gone long famously, and the two had embarked on numerous missions against the hated Bolshevik menace. Those had been days of heroism and daring, both thrilling and invigorating in equal measure. Pieter sighed, letting out a cloud of Pope's smike as he did so. He wondered what his old friend had been doing all these years. Was he collaborating with the English government, perhaps a brave freedom fighter in Himmler? Well, who could say? Peter eyed the journal in his hands. It was a shame to such a lot of exciting tales go to waste in the mind of an old man. When this was all over, Peter resolved to himself. He would take a book or write about his adventures with a spy. Why not? He had all the information needed in the book resting in his hands. Secret agents and super spies in Russia? A novel idea. War planning. Hmm. You get more political power. Increase the liquid reserves. Invest in infrastructure. That's not bad either. Industrial advancements, another production would be nice, but we do need some energy here too. Um, I don't mind doing reconnect Soviet power grids because at least you get two more. Uh, was it grid power? Yeah, two more grid power would be nice. Um, so that'd be pretty good. A thousand more manpower, that's, that's not bad either. Political campaigns, I don't want to lose any weekly stability. So I'm going to do reconnect the Soviet power grids and then we'll do it probably in external investments, maybe. So we just got to wait for that though. Um, promise them democracy, more stability would be nice. Uh, ooh, root out the bandits. Beyond Onega's front line lies a West Russian revolutionary front, a terrifying foe, the most dangerous container of the old Union's legacy. However, behind the barbed wires and sandbags that are aboard with them is Onega's power to face the problem banditry. Band of armed men roam the wilderness, seeking to rob innocent men and women of their belongings. Occasionally, they chance upon an unguarded armed shipment, taking the rifles, ammo, and various tools of warfare away from us. To solve this problem, we have two approaches to pick. 
Either the carrot or the stick. For the soft or less violent option, we can bribe these vagabonds and outlaw them serving to our armed forces in return for pardon and a living wage. For the harder, more drastic option, we can increase our patrols and finally root them out and crush them whatever we choose. The less effort we spend on bickering amongst ourselves, the more room we have to fight against the Reds. A faint hope. The board with them, Vladimir Kropichnikov's humble office was filled with all maps, all of which were covered in drawings, defensive lines, fallback lines, predicted encirclements. If one was not well versed in the reality of the anti communist guard, volunteer guard situation vis a vis manpower and equipment, one would think that Kropichnikov was preparing a real offensive eastwards. Unfortunately, most of what Kropichnikov had drawn up was entirely unrealistic. As more cynical commanders would even suggest to another, well out of earshot of the leader, this plan offensives were little more than pure fantasy. But what was the man to do if not a war game? His guard ran on autopilot, the result of his nurturing a strong and relatively independent command structure. And Kropitschnikov had never been a micromanager anyhow, but as the leader of the Finnish satellite state often reminded himself, the Finns had promised him something that is freedom, and the freedom of a subsequent government, if he was able to take our Congos and end the West Russian revolutionary front once and for all. Perhaps it was. The general's old guilt and ambivalence that translated into his ambition to take the city and end the Soviet remnant once and for all, though a thought of many of his subordinates. To a degree, they were right. None of the volunteer guard officer corps had any love for the Finns, but the, what the officers didn't know was that Kropitschnikov was more motivated by hope for redemption rather than by guilt. Oftentimes late at night, when sleep eluded the aging general, he would walk in the cold night air and without any guard to his office and look over his plans, imagining the aftermath of his fictional victory. It was during one of these nights that, despite his ambivalence for his own role and wariness regarding the Soviets, he resolved that he would beat them or die trying. Well, it can be found anywhere. Also, if there's any country you want me to play as, please let me know as well. Um, or like any path that I've not done, because I've played a lot of Warlords in TNO. Like I've played almost every Warlord here. And there might be some different ones since there's going to always going to be updates for TNO on occasion. So please let me know what would you like to see. I certainly do like Phil Schlafly in America at the time of recording, and maybe another Wallace run. Oh, not Wallace, but Bennett run. Wallace Bennett, and then maybe another Gold Water run. We'll see. But let's go and do a reconnect power grids, and then next round investments because I want to pay off our debt as much as possible, and then build, build, build because we're trying to get up some roads. And then we're trying to get some uh, uh, office administrations, and that's pretty much all we can really afford, which kind of sucks. Oh, we, we got stuff. Okay, so let's go with equipment, probably. Nice. An ultimatum. Ah, oh, shnickies. Well, I don't want to lose. We'll see. Um, because these guys are already dug in, and these divisions are what? Oh, they're not great. Oh, they're really not great, are they? They had to fight over rivers well. They will not back down so easily. Of oh, Australia resigns, huh? We'll see. They're throwing in two divisions right now. They'll throw in more divisions, obviously, as well. We don't have a lot of manpower, and nor a lot of guns. Ah, <sighs> shnikes. Lip sick prison breakout, huh? So, um, we are freedom. Remove the radicals. Promise and democracy and our mission to guarantee stability to all that inhabit Onega. We have come upon, uh, upon an opportunity to legitimize us in the eye of the public. Democracy is a strange concept of Russia after centuries of imperial rule followed by two decades of Soviet administration. The people of Russia have not yet truly experienced what democracy is and what it entails. Freedom of speech and expression might be seen to an average Onega person to be a pipe dream conjured from another realm. But look at that, awesome. To rouse the will. The well of the negative fight for its fate in West Russia, we can promise the implementation of full parliamentary democracy. With legal rights to come with it, our once once our long, seemingly never-ending struggle is over, the rule by the will of the people shall be dawning upon Russia. Now that we have promised the last of the people, we shall herald a new era for Onega, where it fights not for ideologies of the will of foreign despots, for liberty and for freedom. Hey, we actually won. Well, Barb's getting worse. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's okay. Did you learn a lot? You actually learned quite a bit. There you go. Train is well. Oh, no longer. Nikolai Omelin had not known what to expect when he crossed the hill he well remembered. Just outside his hometown of Povinitz. Whatever it had been, it was not what he found. Despite the length of time he served with the volunteer guard, he had not returned home in years despite the Povinitz location just over the Finnish border. And in the terms of appearance, he recognized much the hill itself. Of course, as a spire of the town church, a strange wall that one of the more eccentric residents had built to protect his garden from the children such as himself. But he quickly found they no longer recognized the people. The eccentric resident was gone, as nearly as everyone else he remembered, confused. He had demanded answers of those encountered, and in a short order discovered the reason why he no longer knew his hometown's inhabitants. They had been nearly to one replaced. Since his last visit, the Finns had displaced the Russians and Polonets, including his own friends and family that had lived there since the time of the memorial, in the place where Finnish settlers were encouraged by the government to venture into Karelia and to further secure for the Republic. Amelin had been struck nearly speechless, and unsure of how to respond, and departed shortly thereafter during the return journey to Onega Harbor. He quickly found himself unable to feel anything other than disgust. Was this what it had been fighting for, so that Onega's protectors could colonize it? And if it was, what could he even do to hope about it? A man questions his purpose. Uh, don't we all? Don't we still question our purpose, too? Nice. Nice. 
Oh god, everything's not looking great. Well, we have a whole week of old government, which is really bad. We have dealing with banners, which is very bad. I, I don't like that at all. Um, we have finished influence, which is okay. Karelian resettlement, which is okay. And we also have volunteer guard, which is not great for recovery, but personal cost factor is awesome and more defense. I love. This is a lot of political power in exchange for some stability. Um, well, that wouldn't be bad either. Getting a free infrastructure. That's pretty nice. Fuel capacity. Move a little bit faster, focus on research. But another production unit, that's really good. And I do want to do external investments. Hmm. Deal with the bandits. The bandits of Plague Negra still have silting combos and the pop is a problem inherited from when we first set up the fins. Now, more than ever, we must make sure our to secure the logistical situation. As well as our internal border, unless we fill in the next Russian campaign. Or follow the next Russian campaign. Assault them. We have no manpower anyway, so it doesn't even matter. Deploy forces to protect rail lines. Destroy banner stronghold. You know what? Let's screw all the other stuff. We're going to do this one. Assault the hideout. Nice. Move the radicals. Our Finnish benefactors. Without Finland, Old Negra would not exist. That is the simple truth of our circumstances. The current Finnish government continues the policy of disallowing Finnish citizens from serving Old Negra and remaining neutral from all the chaos that emerges from West Russia, supporting no contender to power. Old Negra is a state of Russians, fun and equipped by the powers of being Helsinki. Without their aid, we would have been just another territory absorbed into the front. It's not too late to better our relations with our Western neighbors and benefactors. Russian diplomats shall grace the embassy in Onega, while Kropichnikov shall send over cheers and reassurances of continued cooperation personally. The fates of Finland and Onega are intertwined. If Onega loses, the dominant power in West Russia shall drag it into a war they do not want to enter. If Finland cuts its support, there's no doubt as to what will happen to us. Well, Gomez dies, eh? I guess we have a surplus. Not very much. Inflation is rising, though. But real growth is, go but real growth is going up, too, so... Yeah, it's a give and take. Yeah, I don't care about the task equipment. Hey, get some better production goods. And we'll need more political power to scavenge for more loot. We get two, three, five, five. Oh, we got three. That's nice. Oh, that's so much nicer. Scavenge for that looty booty. Revolving, revolting reminder. What the heck is this? The leader of the anti communist volunteer guard yelled at the side. Aid who had had the misfortune delivering the telegram to him. Karpichnikov was red in the face, an unusual departure from his normal calm and collective effect. It's a telegram, sir, from Helsinki, the aide responded, nearly shaking his from nerves. I know what it is. It's a rhetorical question, Karpichnikov said, his anger quickly depleting. Get out of here. He dismissed the aide in an abnormal, unprofessional fashion. Darn fans, how do they expect me to handle this? The Finnish government had expelled another three villages worth of Karelian Russians to its territory to make room for more Finnish settlers. As more Russian refugees arrived in Onega, they brought with them almost nothing and needed a lot in return. Food, shelter, water, all the things that were in short supply in the town of Onega. And what little territory Karpichnikov controlled. He cared for the refugees, as it would any Russian, but the rate at which the Finns were shoving them into his territory was becoming unsustainable. He sat at his desk and began typing his typewriter, angry letters, all capitals, addressed to the Finnish government and the leader, Karl Leonard Oish. Oish. But as he typed, Karpichnikov's anger slowly left him. He was brought back to the days of his imprisonment, the way the Finns had treated him. He remembered his personal chats with Oish at what thought, at that time, a mere general in the Finnish army. What memory burned brighter than most, Karpichnikov had been starving for days, only been giving food after posing for a photograph, lighting Oish's cigarette. A good day to offer Finnish propaganda. He couldn't go back to that. Ripping the page from his typewriter, he crumpled it up and went to work finding resources for the refugees he could support. The Finns have me by the scruff of my neck. Oh, regular police force. That was way more costly, but more political power. Watch the border. That'd be nice, too. Um, let's watch the citizens first. While it might be difficult for outside eyes to appraise, the region of Onega does not consist solely, solely soldiers. The army as an organization would not exist without the recruits drawn from the populace, be they a refugee or native. Yep. As of late, the more prominent members of the citizenry have displayed sympathies towards the Reds. And on some occasions, the support is not so much subtle as it is brazen and bold. We can allow us to open defiance of our foundations to stand. We'll implement members of the army into the social life of our populace. They'll go to villages, towns, and refugee camps, masquerading as yet another native or refugee. Then they will mark certain demagogues who seek to ruin us and inform on them. After that, the guard will take care of this individual as disciplined on the virtues of democracy, lest they disappear. These are dark times, and to live through it, we must take drastic measures. Assaulting the hideout. As a cloudy and windy day, as the volunteer guard moved into their positions, a band of hideouts stood just atop a hill, overlooking a small lake. At first, it was unassuming, just another home on top of a hill. But the guard knew it was chock full of bandits. It was strange to see them just outside in the open like this, almost as if they were waiting to be attacked. Shouldn't they be living underground in some dark and grimy cave instead of this beautiful white large house? They should at least be smart enough to hide it and lay low, but perhaps these ones are too bright. After all, bandits usually aren't the smartest. Uh, shocking charge would do the trick. Those bandits would surely be outnumbered. 
Once every good man stood ready to assault commence. More than a hundred volunteer guards charged up the hill and the slaughter began. Machine gun bolts rained upon the attacking troops from positions in the windows of the house, striking them down as if they were little toy soldiers with a child would play with them, flicking them over with their finger. It's supposed to be just another hideout with a few careless bandits with hunting rifles, not a well-armed fortress full of bandits with large machine gun nests. How do the bandits have this type of weaponry? Not even when I guess garrisons are less well equipped. Almost as quickly as they began charging up the hill, the brave volunteer guard was fleeing down in terror. But it went end there, even as volunteers reached the bottom, it went on. The barrage of bullets wouldn't end until they made it back to the camp, exhausted and covered in blood. The dead and missing were accounted for, and the guard finally got a chance to rest. Later that night, a communication was sent out to the next regiment commander. We failed again. The soldiers acted more like scared little girls than fearless men. It's your turn now. They might have a weak spot towards the south, towards the lake. Fear of windows there. I just wish we could get some artillery here and bomb them in smithereens. Good luck, Krill. Well, we should probably keep some political power just in case to keep doing this stuff. I sold the uh, weapons, bandit weapons cash, as well as deploy forces to protect rail lines. Yeah, that'd be good too. Well, we'll see. Point seven is not great, but whatever. Corner design reign supreme in Australia, huh? Kind of ugly. Just saying, man. Has Burgundy finally done it. Well, they might, they might have. You're doing a watch board expand civil engineering. North Russian civil engineering, more cost. Uh, that's not bad. I mean, that that is very useful. But we are freedom would be nice too. More stability, more sport as well. Go to that one. Protect rail lines as well. Because right now we are dealing with bandits, and it's not looking great for us. Watch the border. To east into the deeper parts of Russia, someone from Onega would need to pass through the territory of the front. However, Onega and the front have vested interests in not letting each other through. Our border of the front is lined with trenches, real with wires, and blocked by lines and lines of sandbags. Occasionally, however, due to the shortage of personnel on the port of the, a part of the guard, our Red Army battalion will sometimes make it through our lines and wreak havoc on the villages with them. We need to be more vigilant. Compassionate, cuff. We'll tighten his guardsmen's schedules, working them around the clock to ensure that no harm ever comes from the people to the people of Onega. For the Red Army prisoners that we capture, we should ask them to provide information for the next raid or death. Though it might be barbaric for Russians to execute one another without a fair trial, these are desperate times, and we t we will take harsh measures if need be. Storm in the building. The door to the modest cottage uh, flew open as a dozen volunteer guards rushed in. Desks, chairs, tables, all were knocked down and searched. No bandit was found. Only some broken bottles, a few guns, and some bullets. If there had been bandits here, they were long gone by now. They were too late. Although this is still something of use in the cottage. A certain so, in fact, the woman here that lived here lives, lies crying on the floor. She could have def definitely served a purpose. She has to know some secrets of those bandits. Perhaps she even knows another hideout's location. The woman might not have been cooperating fully with the bandits, but there were obvious signs that the bandits have been here for a while. She could have been forced into housing them, but we have no time for empathy while bandits run wild. Hopefully she'll be willing to answer a question. She may need a little coercion, but by the end of the day, the guard will know exactly where to go next. I don't care what they say they would do to you. I promise we're much capable of much, much worse. Oh, you know we are. Because we have to be. Oh, look at that money. Pay debt. Oh, do we not have any more debt? Negative. Oh. Growth. Oh, God. Oh, good God. What the heck? From our taxes? From five built infrastructure. Oh. Below the reserves. Um, well, that helps us out quite a bit more. 5% growth. That'd actually be pretty nice. Modifier. Okay, then. Well, I'm glad we don't have no more debt. Still. Watch border. And, uh, we are freedom. The problem with the West Russian Revolution Front is apparent. However, if we were to take our eyes off them and glance at the regions of West Russia, we'll discover they were extremely, or seemingly alone in the midst of a sea of extremism. Communist, fascist, collaborators, monarchists, and followers of the German racial theory surround us. West Russia was once a beautiful land, and now we stand within its ruins, a lone beacon because of, of light and liberty for a people that has lost its purpose in the wars of the past. Yeah, we'll do this one too. All that resides in Onega, but be they Russian, uh, Finnish, or Karelian origin, they must know that we are freedom. Our guards will spill their blood in defense of the ideas that others within Russia would not even stop to consider liberty and democracy. Everyone else has taken the easy way out. In the pursuit of power, they've given no thought to the fate of the people, and we are different. When we dare to defend it to the final drop of blood, if we must, remove the radicals. After the defeat and shattering of the West Russian Revolutionary Front, the Finnish government of the 50s decided, after the annexation of Karelia into the Finnish Finland proper, to found the state of Onega, a pragmatic solution. Uh, to contain the chaos of West Russia from spilling over to the Finnish territories is the first line of defense should a power rise in the east, and threatened Finland itself, staffed by Russian exiles from various parts of the former Union government. Onega only seeks seas due to its political neutrality that ensures continued Finnish support. 
This support must continue. The radicals from left and right must not be allowed to take power, lest they destroy the very foundations of the state it was created to contain. We must root them out from the government, from our political organizations, from our military or structures. Perhaps then we can stand, not beholden to the left or right, but ourselves. Guarding alone. the railroad. Due to the warnings of a possible attack on an important railroad, the volunteer guard has been sent to protect it from a bandit attack. These bandits have been terrifying countless settlements. We have believed them to hold common sympathies. Our guards should have no problem warding off these bandits, but still, it's critical. Railway, we need to keep the railways uh, secure. Um, the road that could be attacked is our most important connection between Finland and Onega. That's how the Finns are able to send us troops and supplies, and the only suitable route to send troops through quickly. If it's damaged, we can face serious consequences. The guard must not let that happen. Multiple bases have been set up along the railroad, and guards have been sent to secure the stations. We could also set up sniper positions air atop areas we think they may strike. It also might be good to place troops on the trains just in case. The bandits will never make it past our defenses. No more ambushes this time. They will not let us down. Move the radicals like we read earlier. Um, yeah. And expansive engineering. During the time of the Empire and Union, the region of Venegas has only served its purpose as a middleman between the areas bordering Finland and the, the other more industrialized parts of Russia. As such, the infrastructure that flows through it is sorely lacking a holdover from the past. With the Finnish annexation of Karelia and the collapse of the subsequent retreat from the front into Arkhangelsk, Onega took in the one place nobody ever expected to claim, a strategic province that shields Finland from the hordes of West Russia. With new status in mind, Kropishnikov has agreed to expand the civil engineering corps of the Guard. Throughout Onega, they shall build bridges, roads, and more general primary infrastructure throughout our territory to facilitate the quicker movement of troops and supplies to the front lines. Should the front or the other warlords attack, they should not find the Guard wanting or the unready. old equipment recovered after an assault on a bandit hideout. We've captured a cash flow of equipment before the bandits could escape. Our troops are also to recover multiple weapons and support equipment that will prove very useful for keeping our arm men armed and ready to fight. We know the finest guns are better than nothing. Perhaps one day we won't need to rely on scams, weapons, and barely functioning rifles from Finland, but now's not the time. We need to make do with what we have, or the cons can break through like Onega in a day. Those bandits won't get away next time. We could raid them too, but uh, I don't think so. I'm really not thinking so, seeing as we're only like eight convoys with engineers, so. We're going to remove the radicals and then fortify Onega. That's a lot of debt. Fortify, defend the river, that'd be nice. Against Soviet air would be nice, but the ending struggle. From the very beginning, Onega's mission as a buffer state is clear to provide the first line of defense against the remnants of the West Russian Revolutionary Front, currently holed up in the cold northern Russian city of Arkhangelsk. Since its inception, it's been subject to raids, incursions, robberies, and attacks by the front in their attempts to gain more loot and resources to haul back through the lair. Against all odds, Onega's struggle at continuing the front has been so successful so far. However, the continued success of our policy is never guaranteed. The Reds might ride across our borders and not British enemies. On the contrary, they're vicious in their intellect and aggressive in ensuring that their revolution will survive in the present age. We should update our policy. I've containment and organized many of the labor battalions. It's time for us to make our stand as the last remaining bacon of West, a free democracy in West Russia. Destroy the Bennett stronghold. That's fine. We lost 20 guys, whatever. Um, we just want to make sure we keep this debt down because 90% is pretty bad, not going to lie. We don't have that much surplus anyway, so. Remove the radicals. Nice. Deal with the bands, deal with the radicals. Assassin, prominent radical. Disperse protesters. Enforce order. I like that one. <clears throat> the Nego White Guard. Support targets of WRF Finnish advisors. That'd be good. Finns have proven the worth of the defensive doctrines during the Winter War and the continuation conflict after that, strong enough to endure the mind of an industrialized union at the height of its power, has valued the generals and officers of Onega are clear. Finland is the only power with whom we share a commonality of tactics and strategy, not to mention covering, converging political interests. With these factors in mind, we need Finnish instruction. Surely our closest ally would provide them at a lower cost. We'll send the best of our negotiators to Helsinki to negotiate with the Finnish government in place of Finnish soldiers fighting in Onega. They should be willing to power the few instructors. Finnish blood, after almost not be spilled at all costs, once in Onega, while these advisors teach us the Finnish art of war. With Finnish equipment and training, we'll be invincible. Industrial aid. Nice. Finnish flyers cleaning up the cave. This is it. The guard has finally gotten their chance. Almost all of the hideouts have finally been located, and the bandits' numbers continue to thin. It was one of the last major hideouts that had not already fallen to the guard. It was almost a cave dug into the earth and hidden by the branches and leaves. To be honest, it was a pretty good hideout. It had taken forever to track down, even with directions on how to find it, but with the volunteer guard over it finally outside, those poor bandits had no idea what was coming for them. The elite volunteer guard broke through the barriers before the bandits even knew what hit him. The guard learned a lot about the bandits, spending so long hunting them down that every volunteer was an expert in the bandits' tactics. Clumsy bandits had no chance compared to the best volunteers in uh, Russia. Um, within a few minutes, almost every band was either dead or captured with a few guard casualties. Even more good news. Uh, the men recovered many stolen goods of bands had captured. Money, personal belongings, and our expensive commodities are now in the hands of Onega's best. Our leadership has decided what to do with it. Give it all back to the people or to keep for ourselves. That is, of course, whatever guards don't decide to keep. But for now, let's celebrate one of the many 
uh, first of many victories to come over the bandits. No more ambushes, no more dead guards, no more burning homes. Keep it for ourselves. Ooh, stability. Ooh, stability. That'll be very nice. I'm thinking stability. I want to keep it for ourselves. Give it back to the people, though. God dang it. Finish advisors. Because I definitely want to do this stuff here, too. Dealing with the bandits looking better. We go to the government's not good, though. Breaking the ice. Ideally, Karpishnikov would like for his ports to be open all, open all year round. Sadly, in the cold northern Russian climate, the only ports that he possesses are liable to freezing in the harsh winters of the, of the Arctic. As a result, for more than half of the year, Onenka cannot receive aid from Finland and elsewhere without relying on railroads and other land-based methods of transportation. While well, such means are sufficient for now, it would perhaps allow for a large volume of aid from Finland to enter all year if the ports could be used. Lacking options for expansion without anchoring either the Finns or the Reds. There's no time to consider stopgap measures. Draw west like separates us from the Finland proper. We'll attach icebergs on both our sea going out and freshwater ship and shatter the ice that has so long blocked us to the outside world. After this measure is done, traders will enter port Onega in larger numbers than before from Finland or elsewhere. Make sure we got an anti tank as well. A better anti tank would be nice. So, weapon caches. Um, assassinate prominent radicals. Disperse protesters. Oh. Error is selected, huh? I'm not sure what this one does. That'd be nice, but yeah, I force order to be is the best to do for now. And this will make these guys more tempted to attack us as well. We're not trying to make any divisions, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Oh, happy December, everybody. Happy, happy December. Freedom, freedom Flyers. That'll be nice. Have communal fisher raids. Last time to defense. Welcome the Karelian. Secure the railroad. Oh god. Secure the railroad? Oh. Finish Freedom Flyers. Due to the small nature of the industry in Onega, all production of war material will sadly boil down to the centers of the infantrymen. While we are technically capable of producing planes using borrowed finished designs, we are not yet prepared to wage a full scale war in the air. Once again, we'll turn to Finland or so allied in the chaotic Russia possessed only by bloodlust of war. We will not simply petition for them for fires or airport, air support. So, in Kurpishnikov's general staff have proposed an all use for air power. It's flyers. Simple pieces of paper tailored to serve a propagandistic purpose. Or request that the Finns fly over the territories of the Reds, dropping flyers into Moraz and the Soviet soldiers, stationing the border even beyond, depriving the Reds of their will to fight, it will become our first step towards shattering them upon the lines at Onega. A day that reads ahead closer and closer as the day passes. Nice. Not that we do very much with it, but that's okay. You get like no political power after you do that. But it does tempt them to attack us as much as possible. Status of communal fisheries. During the time of the Union, Bukharan's economic policy meant very, every vital labor effort would be collectivized and co-opted. Where the average worker, these efforts were nothing short of a beneficial and revolutionary. Living standards and wages rose following economic growth. However, due to the Reds across the border, this policy with which the government of Onega has a, a live and let live relationship, many inspire workers to so support the front instead of oh, the Onega White Guard. And then we'll finish reading this once this one's done. Nice. There we go. Uh, to resolve the problem, we call for a review of the collectivization plan, the most significant and hence the first industry that the government has decided to tackle as a communal fishery system. But we also conclude the matter in fast. Whatever approaches we choose, the Union's old plans cannot survive without any Soviet policies remaining in the government. Our workers should distance themselves from the Reds and may even come to support us wholeheartedly. Nice. Less than 65% stability. Guarding the railroad. More stability and war support would be very good to have. Oh, no, that's cheaper too. More war support? Oh. Yeah, we're going to this manpower too, huh? Well, that's not good. And happy 1963, everybody. Um, Please drop it. Oh. All right, what do we have here? Um, Not that one. Strategic theorem is probably good for more max entrenchment, more defense and organization, even more max entrenchment, more defense and organization, and crucible population factor. So, combined operations, defense is nice and all, and organization is nice and all, but we don't have any artillery either, so... There you go. And we actually have quite a bit of army XP too, which is nice. Uh, I'm gonna go with at least at least ten combo with at the very least. Any more stability. Um, I do want to save it if we possibly can. All the equipment recovered. We actually have a thousand pieces of, piece of infantry, which is pretty nice. We're missing motorized though, which is not good. We will need a few trucks. Metro base constru construction, nice. Um, go with that, more soft stack for now, too. 
Then we'll do that one next. Last on defense, finish industrial aid. The defense we have on Finland is apparent to every, every, an outside observer. Without the support, perhaps we have to fall into the hands of the Reds or even worse. However, this defense is not extended to the industry. This is one sector in which the Finns have not aided, in the name of maintaining their autonomy and independence. Unlike Onega, however, Finland is functioning economy free from the terror bombing uh, the Germans inflicted on the rest of Russia. It may be wise to consider aid from the Finns regarding this matter at the juncture. We'll go to Helsinki and ask for the Finns for the help. We don't have much time. The new developments in West Russia have made it plain that sooner power will reunite the fractured lands. The Reds, as hard as it is to say, may not be the worst victor in the coming conflict. If the light of in Russian democracy is to continue forever, a little submission to a foreign power should not hurt. Guarding the city. Dimitri stood outside the armory and took out his ladder. The streets of Onega were quiet as he looked up at the overall overcast clouds. His job was to make sure no bandits or criminals broke into the armory. Of course, no bandit would ever be crazy enough to try and attack Onega. It would be suicide. So most days, Dimitri spent watching the people walk by and on the off chance anyone else had to enter the armory. He got to talk to them. He used to, have to ask for their authorization, but not anymore. I still remember the days when he had a great time beating up one person who tried to break in, of course. They were an important government official and didn't need to be authorized, but it was still worth it. So currently, his job was pointless, but if he got paid, he didn't care. Dimitri put his lighter away and thought of home, at least, or what was left of it. After the vents raided his farm and murdered his parents, he had no time to go back to. No home to go back to. That's when he joined the Volunteer Guard, although he didn't expect to sit outside frivolous places like barracks full of guards to secure armory in the safest place of all of the Nega. Why wasn't Dimitri allowed to get his revenge and have a little fun? The rest of the guard was busy hunting bands while he didn't enforce order and wait for the bands to come to him. While well, it might not be fair, at least he gave him a home here. Dimitri waited for the end of his shift, which was still five hours away. Perhaps one day he won't have to stand here for hours and stare at the other people building other building across from him. But it, at least the cat came by once in a while and got a pat. But who knows, there's always a chance he could call, be called into attacks and bandit hideout in some random forest. Hopefully he'll he get his chance. Who knew joining the volunteer guard would be so boring? Enforce order? Oh, heck yeah. Hey, 0.46. Not great, but not bad. Collectivized farming and fishing, huh? I'm gonna go white guard. Well, that's on defense. I'm gonna go white guard, why not? We'll do that one next. And happy February, everybody. During the Finnish Civil War, or the Finnish, or the Winter War, and the Winter War, there existed an elite unit of Finnish army units trained specifically to fight against the communist armies from Finland itself to Russia. Given the success in the continuation of war, the Finnish White Guard are shown an example of what to follow in constructing an army dedicated entirely to fighting the ideas of communism, and a turn containing as well as isolating its influence from the broader world. The governments of Onega have a thing or two to learn from the Finnish yet again. We'll begin a selection process in the army, measuring both recruits and veterans. Those who prove themselves worthy will enter in a new Onega White Guard, which will bear the honorable burden of protecting the people of Onega from the Red Venice. They shall train in the summer heat and the winter depths to prepare themselves against the second coming of the revolution's revenge. More war sport and luck's decision support the targets of the WRRF. Oh, now we can scavenge for loot too, which would be nice. And it takes forever to get more. It takes forever. A United Arab Kingdom, huh? Oh, United Arab Kingdom, look at that. Abdullah, 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 Abdullah. Ada, Ada, Aluba, Duba. Strengthening hold, nice. More construction fees, very good too. Invest in the gate in the cargo. All was quiet on the dark road outside the checkpoint. Barely anyone used this road, just the occasional transport truck heading to the nearby food store, and even more rarely someone that could actually afford a car on this godforsaken heck hole. It was just another day for Andre, searching each vehicle that came through for smuggled weapons. Not much activity been through here today, though. A few hours passed, and the truck finally came to a stop at the checkpoint. The chief officer, Gregory, walked over to the drivers. Andre went back to the back of the truck. Just another search, however, it was a bit strange for the supply truck to arrive this time of night. They must be really behind schedule. The driver kept arguing that they didn't need a search, and they were already authorized to bypass this checkpoint. After too many complaints of them being late and the food was going to spoil, Gregory gave up on the search and walked back to the checkpoint to let the barrier up. But that was against protocol. All vehicles needed to be searched by the checkpoint before they were allowed through. Andre knew something seemed off about this. Worry but unsure of him anything, Andre took matters into his own hands and forced open the back of the truck. Three distinct human ships were visible in the darkness. But before he could figure out who they were, they shot rang out through his ears and a scream came from Gregory. Something swung toward his vision before he could react and everything went black. It's an awful lot of weapons for a food supply truck. Secure the railroad. In the absence of warm water ports, railroads to and through Onegas become an essential asset to Kropichnikov's government. Supplies from Finland came mainly through trains, securing more routes will guarantee a larger volume of support. To the north of us, the Reds hold a significant piece of the Lovenega rail network. They recognize the strategic value it holds for us, and they are therefore doing all they can to keep us from reclaiming it. With the formation of new Onega White Guard units, they are ready to tackle the guards, uh, Reds head on. They may not be willing to relinquish it from their hands, but of course... If we're more, if, they, if so, we are more than willing to take it from them by force. The White Guards will shatter their morale, using their superior training to compensate for the lack of numbers. Once the railway is in our hands, Finland will send us more supplies and aid, and as the day goes by, the Reds will hold, hold over us while we can. Yes, we hope so. Oh, we have a deficit, huh? That's no good. No good. We could tax them a little more, but...
I want to enforce order. I want to have a stronghold. So open bandits caches. Uh, Mega White Guard, we'll do that one next. No. Oh. Privatizing fisheries. Probably begin to worsen. When selected. Strategic tariffs. Develop infrastructure. Okay. It's going to take a while to do all that stuff then. The anti communist guard. Send guard to, to Vologda. Komi to Tatarstan. Gaini and guards the Bashkiria. Interesting. Why is this one in the neck order though? Let's get some more stuff. Equipment? Sure, why not? We're going to add to that debt, man. Secure the railroad. And, uh, which we did already read. Ensure the spot lines don't fail. Welcome to the Karelians. The Karelians are the people who inhabit Karelia, now known as Eastern Finland. Although sharing strong linguistic and cultural links with the Finnish, hundreds of years of Russian rule have made them akin to us, a fact that the Russian Finnish consider inconvenient from year to year. Many Karelians have been displaced by the Finnish government settlers from Finland, emigrated to the areas that Karelians have inhabited for hundreds of years. Where did the Karelians go? Why? Oh, nigga, of course. Well, nigga's admittedly a less than ideal place for them. Perhaps it's not the end of the world, too. Uh, welcome them here. From the refugees, we shall make them soldiers, artisans, factory workers, or even leaders. Once they step into the Russian soil, they will become permanently Russian. Another common interest a struggle against the fronts. Constant waves of raids. Together, we shall reclaim our homeland for a new one for the newly homeless people. I love it when regimes collapse. Large, huge, some curling's in this, huh? Alright. Yeah, we could maybe ready and win against him, but I'm not gonna risk getting force order. Last one. I hope. Foreign investors would be nice too. Oh, we got more protection units? Nice, nice, nice. It's not bad. We need we got trucks going. I mean a spot of artillery would be very nice as well. Let's go with increase by one here and then one more. Very good. Happy May, everybody. We just finished April. Sixty-three. Research speed. Pro up their line. Prepare the redoubts. I want to fortify and do all this stuff, but... I guess prepare the redoubts. Industrial aid now flows from Finland to Onega. And the railroads that secure this aid are in our hands. Perhaps it's time to bolster defenses once again to repel any invaders that try to attack us. With finished technological advances and construction, the spirit of the people of Onega, we can now build new and improved defenses all along our border with the Reds. Redoubts. Situated along the more vulnerable parts of our fortifications, these will serve to block and break any advance the enemy will make in battle. Our soldiers shall form labor battalions and build these immediately. The material for these efforts shall come from none other than the Finns, our closest ally to the West. With these in place, if the Reds or any war that takes place shall think twice before inflicting or initiating a conflict with us. And these redoubts, they shall find that our forces are shattered. Their forces are shattered, and the peace of their offensive use against them. Point one. That's getting better. Still, it's not good. Having a deficit is not good either. If I do this, will we still have a deficit? Probably. Uh, it's not good. But happy now, June. We've got to probe their lines. <laughs> Although they may look daunting, the Reds do not present United Front as of late. The West Russian Revolution Front split in three. In our Congress property, Ukta and Plesetsk. The marshals in charge of uh, Ukta and Plesetsk are infamous for the rivalry in the West Russian War, and might only wait for the front to shatter on the roads away before too long. However, Kurpichnikov reckons that this faction presents an intriguing opportunity for the soldiers of Ornega and the White Guard to take fight the fight to the enemy. We'll test the Reds. Kurpichnikov and his general staff shall have pick and form recon teams from the best of the best. These teams shall attack the Red Lions, giving us an estimate of the preparedness and unity. With the Reds dazed by a, su a succession of crisis that will inevitably happen after the death of Yegorov, they'll not be able to respond with any full-scale attacks, a chance that we cannot hope to ignore. Almost one a day now, nice. Stability's fairly decent. Um, you guys still need to finish training course, repair the redoubts. We'll welcome these guys first, though. Sure, supply lines don't fail. War does not begin and win and with battles, every army marches on its stomach. With the proper infrastructure to ferry food and supplies from our factories and farms to the front lines, or many even the stalwart guard will not stand even against the weakest of our foes. 
Our civil engineering efforts have guaranteed a baseline for the efficiency supply, however. With the war with the Reds fast approaching, we might fear that it might not be enough for all. Let's just secure or prepare more roads, more railways, routes, more trucks, more fast runners, and ensure that the front is well catered. Those infrastructural efforts are not stop at ensuring that our defenses will perform at an optimal rate, but to sustain offenses and attacks into West Russia proper. With the finished aid and the dedication of regard, everything is possible, of course. We have spent much of our existence on the back foot, perhaps it is something before, and let the Reds cower in fear. When I go draft more plans to protect supply lines from Finland in case of war? Yeah, boy. Mine lane would be good to do as well. More defensive core territory is absolutely worth it, though. Absolutely worth it. For 80 days. Let's go and do that one. Uh, add strategic tariffs, increase the trade laws, get a production unit, which is nice. Communism gets increased by more stability. And it's, it got worse. But, you know, it's kind of what we have to do, you know? Defend the river would be nice. Make sure the spy lines don't fail. Lay the mines. Um, probe the line. While the army of Nega is not a force to be taken lightly, there's always a problem that has plagued it since its information. Even the might and formidable Nega, the white guards do not see any, seem less as susceptible to it. We lack personnel. The Nega has never been one of the most populous regions of Russia and the influx of refugees. It has only alleviated this problem to a limited extent. If we were to fight a sustained war with the Reds, we are bound to be bled dry from a sheer lack of soldiers. To resolve this issue, we shall form the Nega civil guards. Drawn up from the youngest to the oldest, all that can find the final war shall be given a rifle and uniform. Wherever we can lift a gun and fire shall find the place in our armed forces. No drastic measure to be sure, but one that is arguably better than letting the Reds run amok through Onegin and into Finland. All shall bear the burden to assess our triumph. To assure our triumph. Assassinate. We can do raids, but nah. Our manpower is extremely precious, and we gotta make sure every soldier is ready to go and fight. So Maybe we should have not increased them to like 10 combats because we can't afford them. I'm not going to do austerity or civilian austerity, but still. Coalition government in the Philippines, huh? Cool. We do have a guard. Or come attack us, maybe. Make sure they don't fail. Oh, find them work. Oh, yeah. Well, what I guess stands at the precipice of the Russian war as many, and as such, many flee to it, seeking salvation from the wars and conflicts that engulf the rest of the Russia. From the east comes the Russians, and from the west comes the Finns and Karelians. All find the rest in the refugee camps on the borders of Onega, fertile breeding ground for the fostering of radical and extremist ideas. Some have even shown support for the Reds openly, and getting rid of these individuals can only do so much to contain the spread of communism. It's time for us to seek structural changes uh, rather than relying on uh, intrigue. We shall kill two birds with one stone, our radicalization and labor problems. Uh, these refugees will wake to the sound of factories, fisheries, and farms throwing, throwing their doors open. Welcoming our new workforce with open arms, without the opportunity to think of their condition, these radical ideas shall die away quietly and without fuss. A decent amount of Carolines enlist. While the volunteer guard of Onega is very well trained, they fell all short of manpower, of course. The most divisions are made up of less than half of what our military should be. Oh, uh, this is a recipe for disaster, of course. So we have tasked our veteran and our military to recruit Carolines to resettle in Onega into the volunteer guard. Thankfully, our recruitment stations have informed us that a decent number of Carolines have signed up. Um, while not enough to form an entire division, uh, <clears throat> this still gives a good amount of manpower to work with. This is not a number we're expecting to sign up, and anything to help our manpower shortage is greatly appreciated. Uh, their advanced training will begin shortly after we tell them that all organized. Let's get them all organized. Hopefully they'll fight just as valiant as their motherland and against communism as the regulars do. Well, it's good to see more willing, men willing to fight. I wonder if that'll save any cost at all. Maybe not. Oh, crap. Should have done that then. Well, maybe that was a mistake, but whatever. Brother lines, find them work, find them housing. Yes. The refugees will grateful for the work and jobs we provide for them. Are still living in refugee camps from the east and the west. The site of new, new white paper tents is a pitiable, pitiable sight. Kapishnikov, however, sees that in their suffering a new opportunity to show that they will be entirely indebted to the government of Onega. We'll build them cheap homes in our cities, villages, and towns. Whether Russian, Finnish, or Karelian, all are welcome in Onega. Are required. Our factories will show turn of the building materials required for this project. Meanwhile, the guards shall form labor battalions and conscript the refugees in his effort. Once these are complete, the refugees shall no longer live out in the open, but on the bosom of Onega. To whom they shall remain eternally loyal. This sand and rebellion shall fade away as the dark and dangerous ideas that one embraced due to the desperation Late of the time. mines. Kapershnikov and the white guards do not go to war expecting a defeat. However, due to the difference of power at the front, a loss is a plausible possibility. Our offenses into West Russia should be choose to execute them are open to a likelihood of failure. As with all of our planning so far, the government has decided to plan for contingencies in case of a Soviet attack against Onega. The redoubts and forts no longer be enough. Mines shall load the ground between our heartland and the board of the front will not enough to stop their advances entirely. We should be able to give our troops the time and space needed to group and organize. Once they're ready, we shall charge again into the thick of the fray, taking the Reds by surprise. We'll inform the locals of our decision, but not seek the consent. Almost carry Nugget's burden on its march to the final victory against communism. And the last line in defense. 
The White Guard shall install the borders of Onega, ready to stamp any intruder that brings the horrors and chaos of West Russia. However, there may come a time when even the Star Wars Guard will fall. Kaprishnikov is keenly aware of the power disparity between the Guard and any power that manages to unify West Russia. He admits to his shame that even with a finished aid, backing and training, it all may not be enough. As such, we must prepare for the contingencies. If the border posts of the Guard will not fall and the invaders pierce deeply into our territory, we shall make them pay for every inch of the land they take from us. Our particular focus is the capital. The West Russians will march in, thinking that it is empty and unguarded, for the guardsmen had routed in the field. We'll subvert this expectation, we will defend it the last, with machine guns and sledown of cocktails, with arrivals and grenades, with fists and knives and teeth. They shall not pass. As we'll do more. And we'll do this one, because it gives 50% increasing our GDP, or increase our liquid reserves, which we got last time. So now, we're, now our debt is looking okay. Even though, you know, we still... Oh, well, yeah, I know if you're, you're the surplus. I didn't even do anything about that. Nice. Yeah, you guys are. We still need more power grids, but you're still ten combos, which is very nice. Um, Mara right to struggle from the moment of its inception. Onega's destiny was clear to prevent the Soviets from establishing a foothold and continue their influence from spreading farther into Europe. Rather than a dagger point in the front's heart, it's always been a shield that protects Finland and Europe beyond it from the contagious and brilliant ideology of communism. We may stand alone, but we do not stand without impetus, motive, or reason. Are our struggles righteous and without flaw? We shall let the people know of our ideals and legitimacy. The papers, readers, and all forms of media shall convey a legitimate claim to existence. Hearing of this news, our people will stretch forward to the front lines and the factories and on the farms to stem the sweeping tide of the Red Army. If we fail, we shall not fail without honor. If we succeed, then all of Russia shall know of freedom and liberty, and Europe shall be free from the communist threat. Even more defense would be super nice. Destroy them all. The threat of communism against freedom of the European peoples is real. If it failed to post signed to us by the Finns, then there's little doubt as to what could occur. Uh, the West Russian Revolutionary Front do not pose a threat to Onega alone, but to Europe as a whole. Their dream of a world revolution shall not stop at West Russia alone. Uh, the, after the conquest of Russia, they will turn their eyes and Muscovy to Germany and through that, that to the precipice of the Atlantic. If we do not stop them here, no one will stop, them, stop or halt their momentum. We must destroy them to merely kill them is not enough. We shall fight them in the redoubts, the trenches, and the forts. If they defeat us there, we shall fight in the marshes and streets. We fight to our last, our machine goes not halting their fire until they stop where we die. For the salvation and safety of Europe, no price is too small to pay. And for this one, we have to be at war, so we have to wait for them to go to war for that one. And uh, fortify Onega. The anti comms guard, unfortunately, only has one major city can really reliably control now. Of course, it is Onega. Lying just across the WRF and military outposts, it is key to our goals. If Fort David is lost, there's nowhere to retreat to. Over the years, it's evolved into a hub of trade as well as a station for all those who want to flee the oppressive Soviet system. If and when the front carries out its invasion, it's more than certain that our capital, resting so close to the unofficial border, will be a prime target. Thus, even though much of the guard is already positioned in the military's town and protected further, reinforcements must be called in. From other villages and towns, as well as newly recruited troops, more men must come to ensure that our capital never falls. Against Soviet air. One might think that Onega is a minor warlord, they can never hope to stand up against the air force of other much more formidable, formidable armies than Russia. The industrial bases of others, especially to the West Russian Revolutionary Front, dwarf that of our state, which can only count on what few factors were recently built with finished aid by the Kropichnikov government. We're behind in airplane production capabilities, but that does not mean it is impossible to make a difference, of course. Onega and Finnish engineers have been in contact over the last few weeks discussing how to combat the effect of the socialist air power. Anti aircraft, guns, and technicians will be provided, combined with our knowledge about Soviet air force tactics and their weak points from when we fought with them and against them, which should not be a typical test to protect the skies of Onega. But we'll read the last few focuses here, and then call it an episode, and then see what happens with the next one. And hopefully we don't die. Well, comrades, Karpeshnikov read the telegram he had received, and then he read it again, looking up at the aide who brought it to him the news. The first words out of his mouth were not what they expected. How the heck are we hearing this from Helsinki, and not our own people? They didn't have an answer. He nor anyone else had the heart to tell him that the general of the volunteer guard spy network in the front was notoriously ineffective. Regardless, Karpeshnikov began rubbing his right temple with his hand. There is, is news. Uh, Yegorov is dead. And the general's mouth stretched downwards and became lost in thought. The pair of men once been comrades, serving the Union and her people alongside one another. The thing had been different. Oh, oh. Things had been different then. Kaprishnikov reminded himself, but then it stopped the general from reminiscing about his past, when he fought for rather than against the Soviet system. He barely muttered dismiss to the aide as he looked down at the neat typeface on the telegram. As he heard his office door shut, he reached down to his desk and opened a drawer, carefully pulling out a neatly wrapped cloth. Unfolding it revealed a creased picture, well worn with the time, Kaprishnikov gently took the picture and unfolded it. Kapishnikov could still make out the faces and the smiles of one, his one comrade waving at the camera. It was just after he had been named commander of the 43rd Rifle Division. He looked at the photo for what it must have been 10 minutes reliving the moment. The photo began to fade, but the memory was just as crisp in Kapishnikov's mi mind as it had happened just a day prior. The happiness he had felt, the sense of accomplishment. Things he hadn't felt for quite some time. Yegorov's passing may have presented both an opportunity and a change in the guard's strategies, but Kapishnikov decided that all this could wait for one day. I'll miss you, my old friend, and fortify, fortify Kargopol. Kargopol Gopol was never a particularly important place. The civil rests on the banks of the upper Onega River, and that is what has brought it into the prominence for Kropishnikov's government. Just across the river, one can notice. 
uh, of military apples with the red and gold flag of the WRRF waving above it. Cargo pulls the city around the frontier and as such must be protected from hostile incursions and the possibility of invasion. We know that if it falls, then the comms will be able to control the trade along the Onega and we cannot let that happen, of course. New fortifications will be built and troops off the anti comms guard will be called in to assist the defense of the town. A defense line will be formed on the banks of the cargo pole to ensure that no matter what will firmly survive against any Russian onslaught. Oh, crap, they're attacking us too. Oh, seem to be doing okay then. Oh, what's the African war? Well, that's nice. Um, we can't raid him either. Oh, darn it. That sucks. Uh, defend the river. The Onega, uh, Onega River is... Look at this. Uh, it's a crucial part of our territory. It's flowing from the south until it reaches the White Sea. It happens to form the border between the anti communist guards controlled territory with the remains of the west of the WRF. As a counter stronghold presents the only critical threat to us at the moment, it would be prudent to further stretch entrench our position on the Onega, which is a good natural defensive line. Should it be lost, one will be in dire straits, but that's all the more reason for reinforcing its defenses. With the extent of finished aid, the bare bones pre-existing fortification will be built up. Just in case the WRF or anyone else gets the idea of invading, and when they do, we shall be ready. Oh. Oh, they're not at peace. Oh, they're fighting the coming Republic, so. Oh, well, I guess that one that fight's over then. Um Okay, cool, not bad. But I think we're gonna end the episode here because now we just have to wait and see what will happen when people try to try to come and kill us. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. As we'll see if we can survive against the WRF and whoever or whoever unifies Western Russia. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great Kurapichnikov Rostov your day.